This episode is proudly supported by Pepe Sayer Australian Cultured Butter, batch churned from single origin cream. We've got a culturing process, a fermenting process, an aging process. So the butter will taste very different than, I guess, the average supermarket butter. Uh, I like to say we make butter makers butter. Like this is the sort of butter butter makers will would like to eat simply because of the slow process in which we ferment and age and, and get the flavour into it. You know, the natural fermentation that gets all the flavours into the cream and then once you churn it, you end up with this really rich, flavoursome butter that evolves and changes because it's a live culture that's in the butter as well. For more information, go to pepisaya.com.au. It's all about just deliciousness really and um local produce and and try and um highlight the hunter this is the deep in the weeds podcast i'm anthony huckstep during the summer many australians jump in the car leave the major cities and explore the glory of the regions with the lack of international travel regional areas have become prime destinations. But what does it take to create great regional dining experiences? Frank Faulkner is the owner of EXP Restaurant and Fork Foods Kitchen Bakery in Pakolban in the Hunter Valley of New South Wales. Frank, how are you? Yeah, great. Thanks, Anthony. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you on the show. You're in one of Australia's uh, greatest wine regions, um, doing incredible food offering. What's it? What's it like being in uh, in the Hunter as a restaurateur? Yeah, I think uh, I'm very fortunate, along with uh, all the other restaurateurs in the area. It's um, the perfect sweet spot, I would say. We're you know two hours down the road from Sydney. Uh, and that's it. People are traveling for food and wine. So we have locals during the week and every weekend there's great uh, tourism for the area. And um, it's easy to do what we want to do, have uh, a fine dining restaurant. Well, that's kind of the category we get put into. But um, because there's a market for it. Um, yeah, people after good food, good wine. This summer is a little bit different to some of the more um, recent summers. Uh, it's a little bit wetter. What's, what's it? What's it been like for you so far? Um, I've enjoyed it. Normally, every summer you're in the sweltering heat, forty degrees in the kitchen. Uh, your freezers start to break down and your fridges struggle, so you have to plan your menu and check that your ice creams are still frozen for service. But uh, <laughs> this this summer's been a breeze for that kind of stuff. It's been nice in the kitchen. And uh, I've never seen the hunters so green. Like I've spoke to um, a few wineries and solidors and some of their grapes. Um, it's great at the moment and we've had some awesome rain, but uh, now they all want it to stop <laughs> for a decent vintage. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I can't complain as a chef. My garden's uh, thriving in this weather. Well, tell us a bit about the region. What sort of uh, produce is there available on hand in in summer for you? Uh, I guess some of the local stuff that I always love to use every season, uh, like wild fennel grows in abundance everywhere and it's going to um, uh, flower and pollen at the moment. So it's always on um, savoury or sweets. Some local blueberries, uh, not too far from us, they'll start towards the end of December in the next in the next two weeks. Uh, and they'll be there just a short period, so I get on them and order as much as I can for two months. And then um, we've got local stone fruits. We have some local people that just had kumquats that just finished up. Um, beautiful local um, chickens, ducks, eggs, all that kind of stuff. Um, and in Morpeth, which is not too far from us, not far from where I live. Um, lots of corn, lots of carrots, Newcastle Greens, who um, who grow a lot of produce for us and also a lot of restaurants in Sydney. So, yeah, we definitely um, have our fair share of local produce, which is great. You've had a, an incredible influence in the region uh, since opening EXP, but uh, take us back to when you were young. What sort of role did food play in your family? Um, I guess I come from... Oh, my mum took care of myself and four other kids. She had five of us and uh, 
was by herself for a good chunk of my childhood um, or when I was in high school. So, yeah, we lived on a budget and um, my mum was a really good cook. But um, I was the pickiest little shit uh, <laughs> when it comes to food. I used to never eat anything to say that I was going to be a chef when I grew up. Like um, my mum probably would have laughed at it because she would have had to force feed me, me uh, vegetables. So <laughs> it's pretty funny looking back at my childhood. But then um, once I hit high school, um, I really enjoyed food tech and I had a beautiful teacher that touched me and probably many students like and helped them along the way. And, um, and I got a first casual job when I was 15 uh, and I really enjoyed that job. Probably had a few, few avenues that I was looking at going down, um, but I really enjoyed food tech and hospitality, really enjoyed my first job. And then I just kind of never looked back. It was always... It was easy working in the kitchen. It was lots of fun. Um, I got a grip of things very easily. So, um, yeah, I just I kind of never really saw any other path after that. Take us back to those early years. Were there any sort of standout experiences in the commercial kitchen that sort of made you realise that you could make a real career out of this? Well, yeah, there's a few points. Like I said, my, my first job was at Broke, the Cow Cafe it was called. Um, and I just worked with these two owners. They had their own cellar door, only open weekends, and I worked with both the owners and maybe two other staff. Uh, they had a lot of time to spend with me, and they gave me a lot of responsibility, and that uh, responsibility early on um, gave me confidence in the kitchen, taught me how to cook steaks, cook basic desserts, baking, and um, they thought I picked it up really well, and that kind of... Uh, nurturing kind of, yeah, really gave me that confidence. Uh, so I wanted to get an apprenticeship after that. Um, my apprenticeship was the total other end of the spectrum, uh, working in a hotel. <clears throat> so I uh, picked up a gig when Crown Plaza opened at Hunter Valley. And um, I thought I thought hotels were the business. I just thought this is where I'm at when I was an apprentice. Um, <laughs> I thought, you know, I'm going to qualify. I'm going to become a sous chef, a head chef, and then I'm going to sit in the office and I'm going to design menus. <laughs> and I thought that was the pinnacle of, um, of what careers would be. I just didn't know anything. And um, But working in the hotel court, I guess, um gave me lots of structure and organisation. There's lots of good uh, processes and organising and HR and managing staff that you may not learn when you work in a small restaurant or a small fine dining restaurant. Um, so I, I would say early on I was stunted in food knowledge um, but definitely ahead in organisation, uh, which is a big thing. Um, and then, yeah, so, yeah, different kind of points. That was a big eye-opener. But then the next one, my wife and I and six other friends from that all worked at Crown Plaza decided to move to London. Um, and we all shared a house together, <laughs> which, which was fun and stupid. And, um, <laughs> and then we all, uh, many of us worked together well, so it was probably a bit much. But <laughs> it was um, it was good because I learned there was much more than hotels. Um, I worked at a nice restaurant and worked for Tom Akins over there. And, um, yeah, he's a brilliant and intense, scary chef um, with amazing food and amazing work ethic. Um, and, yeah, that opened my eyes to restaurants. And since then, I never looked back. Tom Akins is one of the UK's most celebrated chefs. Take us back into that kitchen. Is there any dishes that uh, you remember from your time there and, and what it was like in that kitchen? Um, I wouldn't say dishes are the memories. It's more produce. Um, so, yeah, after being in a hotel and, I don't know, just bulk ordering produce and getting th meats in, you know, pre-portioned or, Produce on menus that's definitely not 
prime in their season uh, to go over there and use very seasonal produce and the best that they can find uh, in the UK. You know, hand-dived scallops that were, I remember weighing scallops that were 180 grams and we would shuck them and then um, like pulling one of those open and just looking at it and it's like a steak, you know, you would cut it um, into three fillets to cook it. It's just... uh, I was just amazed. I never knew there was stuff like this. And um, working with a lot of flatfish was great over there. Um, so, yeah, spent a bit of time on fish and on meats, um, dry aging. So, yeah, learning a lot of those things and picking up um, a lot of recipes while I was over there, which was great for building building a repertoire, really. What, what brought you back to Australia? Um yeah, probably money. <laughs> um, I, my wife and I, or we were just dating at the time. Uh, we bought a house before we went overseas, um, and my mum was kind enough to house sit while we were gone. Uh, and while being over there, yeah, we just couldn't kind of pay off a mortgage and be over there for any longer. So we we did one year and then decided to move back home. You moved back to the Hunter and um, joined Troy Rhodes Brown at, at Muse Restaurant. And what, what was it like being part of um, the growth of that restaurant and the many accolades that it received? Yeah, it was amazing. Um, I always remember the first time my wife and I dined there before we went overseas and um, – Yeah, at the time, that was like the best dining experience we'd ever had. I thought it was amazing. Um, Yeah, it's it's a beautiful team, beautiful dining room, and uh, a great mentor, boss, and and friend to work with. So when I came back to the area, uh, there was two restaurants that I wanted to work at. It was either Muse or um, there used to be uh, The Rock, uh, Pools Rock. Yeah. which had many accolades as well. And uh, I just really enjoyed the team at Muse and uh, was able to take on a position there as a chef to party. We've had Troy on the show a couple of times now, but what's what's he actually like to work with? Do you have any stories of the experiences? Troy's just a good, uh, yeah, he's just an awesome guy. He's very thoughtful and uh, would do anything for his staff. And also, um, yeah, very funny and very calm for a chef. He is so patient and calm and even maybe if he's not feeling that way inside he looks it (laughs) so um i just think uh i never really saw him lose his cool ever and even if something went really tits up yeah he's just always so cool calm and collected which um yeah reflects on the way his team works and and the way he carries the whole restaurant really um but yeah we we had a great friendship like um and i still talk to troy every every week normally i'll call him for a half hour chat on the way home talk about service to talk about food a bit of friendly competition here and there but um yeah he's always been a a great mentor and um yeah i just yeah just always wish him the best he's just yeah total champion some great experiences that we had there always remember we um had Tetsuya come for a uh, cook a lunch at Muse. We did like, he did, or well, we cooked a three course lunch and he come and did a cooking dam and he got to eat Troy's food and um, be with the team for the day. So, um, yeah, that was an amazing experience. But um, also, a, a definite highlight was um, when Muse received two hats uh, to kind of hit that point. Um, yeah, it was well-deserved for Troy and Megan. And um, I was just thankful to be part of the team and kind of be put in the role as head chef when that happened. Take us to that role Muse and Troy and yourself built incredible relationships with uh, local producers. What sort of foundation did that build for you to move to open your own venue? Yeah, it was amazing. Um, I guess... Yeah, I absorbed a lot of that from him. Uh, he had lots of connections with um, different growers and producers. And then, um, 
I guess starting as a chef to party and wanting to always prove myself uh, and try and help him in the business, I would search for other producers. So I guess I was a part of that to help um, bring on new suppliers whenever you can find them. It's not always easy. Uh, everyone's out there and everyone's doing their own thing and honing their skills or growing their produce, but um, not everyone's always connecting as easy as you think. Like you have to actually search for these guys um, and that's it. They mightn't be looking for restaurants or know that there's a market. Um, and even to find little guys that, you know, have uh, local mulberries or local blackberries every year or or the kumquats, um, I guess, yeah, that comes with time and, and people that dine in the restaurant. Um, so, yeah, to, to help... Uh, yeah, build the produce was uh, definitely a big step in um, making it easier to open a restaurant, that's for sure. Well, take us to that moment when you landed on AXP. How did the idea and the site and everything come together? Um, I think um, I probably – Troy was always easier to talk to, which was great, and I always uh, had said, you know, I'd love to open my own restaurant one day. And he'd kind of joke and be like, oh, let's open another Muse together. Um, and I'd just laugh at him and be like, nah. <laughs> I said, I'll open a restaurant with you if you, like, we call it whatever I want. And he'd be like, no, nah, we'll just do another Muse. Um, I wonder if he remembers that actually. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> I came up with the concept maybe two years before I actually um, – found the restaurant and was working on it. Uh, and I guess EXP, just the the name is all about the experience. So I wanted a restaurant that was about um, encompasses, yeah, more than food and wine, uh, but just everything to enhance the experience. So I wanted to focus on, yeah, the crockery, the cutlery, uh, where the tables are made, uh, just try and, uh, get every detail to be something unique and special. Uh, probably went too overboard in that thought process before I opened the restaurant, uh, not knowing how much, oh, how, how little time I had uh, in my day. Like uh, I wanted to have my own soaps and I wanted to have this and that and create my own drinks and, and there's just not enough time in a day when you're starting something like that. Um. So, yeah, from from building that name and then kind of working on a website and dishes and then finding a space, I just heard that um, Oakvale Winery was looking possibly to put a restaurant in. So I reached out and uh, met Richard Becker, who's the owner there, and um, pitched the idea to him and his wife and... Uh, I guess the the rest is history. They were very interested, and um, they gave me a shot at starting starting our first restaurant. Take us back to those early years. What was it like uh, running your own uh, restaurant like that compared to being a head chef? Yeah, you learn very quickly um, just how much everything changes. Like being a head chef, um, I could spend a lot of time being creative and working on dishes <laughs> and then losing lots of that time to managing staff and paperwork and just organising things and hiccups and problems that kind of arise every day. So you soon learn that you don't have all that much time for those things that you might enjoy uh, as you did before. So I kind of I say to young chefs and people that work for me now, you know, make sure because I say yeah, I, I am happy with the way I did everything but if I was to have another opportunity I would make sure that I learn as much as possible before reaching out because you won't get to take that step back again you won't get to go and travel and learn at other restaurants or or kind of um, you have to learn you have to be self-taught from then on 
you have to teach yourself everything, um, which is a great process and I enjoy teaching myself, but sometimes it's a longer process than learning from a mentor. How much has EXP changed in the six-year um, life that it's had so far? Yeah, tremendously. <laughs> um, tremendously. That's it. We started at Oakvale Winery, uh, 30-seat restaurant maybe inside and 10 seats outside. Uh, small chef's bar, six or eight guests at the chef's, chef's bar. Uh, we used to do a la carte during lunch, or we used to do a la carte all the time and offer a tasting menu. Um, towards the end, it was a la carte and tasting menu. But then um, finally, three and a half years ago, uh, we moved to our sister site, so where um, Fork Foods Kitchen and Bakery is. So um, after having two businesses at separate locations for a year and a half, uh, I just found, yeah, it, wherever I was spending my time, the other business would struggle. Um, so combining them just seemed like a no-brainer to combine overheads and also be in all places at one time. Uh, just seemed like a great opportunity and I thought we could pull it off in the space that we had. So we um, gutted our whole uh, restaurant and in that process we were hit by COVID right at that point. So we were mid-renovations when COVID hit and we just sunk all of our kind of savings into revamping the restaurant. So we were kind of... um shitting ourselves a little bit because <laughs> we just paid, you know, 50% and you got half the work done and we had two restaurants jammed into one with shit everywhere and then all of a sudden we were in lockdown. <laughs> so, um, it was, yeah, it was a little bit worrying but um, it was just lucky enough for government support really. Um, and then, yeah, to open up after that and open up in our new space which is just – we had an architect help design this one. The layout and the feel of the restaurant is just, yeah, it's very chic. It's very, oh, it's just very modern. It's very us. And now we now we offer a, a tasting menu uh, that evolves weekly. We probably change two or three dishes a week. Um, it's just the one tasting menu we focus on uh, giving a very unique, great experience for every customer. And I feel that's what we deliver now. Um, and it's it's taken, yeah, that five to six years to get it to a point where I'm really happy. It's it's finally like the vision that I had at the start. So, yeah, I'd say it's a, it's a big process to get there, but I feel like I've finally reached it. <laughs> Tell us a bit about uh, your food and your cooking. Do you, do you have a dish or two at the moment on the menu that sort of exemplifies where you're at as a cook? Um, hmm. There's a few sig- – well, yeah, it's all about just deliciousness really and um, local produce and and try and um, highlight the hunter. So – there's a classic, when I opened the doors, um, I had ham on toast on um, and it's house-cured duck ham, macadamia butter and toast. Um, so, yeah, super simple but it's so Moorish and it's people eat the whole menu. They get like 12 items and it's 70% of the time the favourite. So, um it's had evolutions in its six years. It used to be served on brioche, then it was served on focaccia. The um, the duck ham recipe has changed and evolved. And um, the current one, it's served on our sourdough crumpets. And, um, yeah, we do a banging crumpet and it's just, I think that that's, yeah, it's one of the memorable, yeah, memorable dishes that we serve. You mentioned that you moved EXP to the site where Fork Foods Kitchen and Bakery are. Tell us a bit about um, about Fork Foods and, and what you're offering there. Yeah, Fork Foods, um, I, I always love eating casual and dining at cafes and um, have enjoyed making bread. So 
we wanted to open a bakery. Um, so it's um, the total opposite end of the spectrum when it comes to EXP, um, which I figured would be great. Uh, means we could cover the whole market in the area. Uh, we can have people dine for dinner and then come back for something super casual in the day. So uh, we all offer all day breakfast and brunch menu and still it's about using, you know, great local produce and trying to, yeah, source great produce, not do too much to it. And, um, yeah, just the simple things done right. So we just try and do, you know, the best bacon and eggs in town, triple smoked bacon from uh, Hungerford Hill, uh, Hungerford Meats, and then um, local eggs from Little Hill Farm. We make our own sourdough, chipotle glaze our bacon, um, and we do the best hash browns. I, I, I don't like to float my own boat, but I haven't, I haven't had a hash brown as good as ours that I can think of anywhere. We just got, we got hash browns down pat. Like, and I, I love a good hash brown. Like I'm dirty for a, a for a Macca's hash brown. Like <laughs> I don't care what anyone says. They're good. And um, yeah, we do it. We do a banger of a hash. So it's, um, and then crumpets is the other thing at the bakery. So um, we focus on our bread and crumpets, uh, fresh baked sourdough each day, a few brownies and cannelays, but then we do, um, you know, six pack of sourdough crumpets so you can get plain ones to take away. Or um, for the last few months, we've been doing loaded crumpets. So we do um, kind of like a loaded donut. If you think about it, it's like a apple pie crumpet or um, cultured butter with uh, Nutella and brownie, Lemmington with Davidson plum and uh, Banoffee. So that's kind of, um, it's like the other side of fork foods that i um really enjoy those simple things yeah just i really love bread <laughs> i try not to eat too much of it but yeah <laughs> what's it like running a regional restaurant is is there an obligation to represent the region and, and look after locals as well yeah definitely there's um good camaraderie amongst locals uh, and they're all out to support each other. Like um, whenever someone visits the Hunter Valley, you want them to enjoy their whole experience, not just at your restaurant. Uh, you know, you hope they're staying somewhere nice and you hope that they have other great experiences because all it's going to do is promote the Hunter and bring more people here by word of mouth or bring that customer back in the future. So, um, yeah, when people dine, we're always recommending our friends when it comes to wineries and cellar doors and other experiences because, um, yeah, it just it brings more for the whole area. What do you love about what you do? Uh, what I do right now, I just have a great work-life balance with um amazing team and, yeah, cr- creativity and freedom with what I'm doing. Like I was saying earlier, it got me, you know, five, six years to get to this point. Um, I used to work for my business and now my business works for me. So um, I just really have, yeah, the best of both worlds with um, what we do at the restaurant and the cafe at the moment. Well, it's summer and uh, people are traveling and taking taking breaks and getting on holiday. Um what how, how does how does it feel moving um, into twenty twenty two? What sort of uh, positives are you going to take from this experience, and what are you looking forward to? Um, just looking forward to moving out of COVID and back to hopefully some normality. <laughs> it's been rough for everyone and hospitality, but um, yeah, definitely. Hospitality has been hit hard, but I feel for lots of other industries like, um, yeah, music and arts, definitely, and the whole tourism sector. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that the country is, you know, nearly 95% vaccinated. Um, we will live with this and hopefully just uh, everyone can continue getting on with the job. Um, I just want to... That's it. I just want to do what we do without having to worry about um, 
lockdown <laughs> lockdown or anything, <laughs> which I don't think we will have to. So um, I'm excited to just uh, keep moving forward. And actually on that, I, I just think it's kind of like a whole new start. It's been after this whole COVID thing. And um, I think after chatting to some restaurants and other people in the industry, uh, we got to make choices that you wouldn't normally make uh, and reset the rules, which has been great. Like you've reset a whole new path on uh, yourself um, with what you're doing. And I think, I think we've had the same opportunity. Uh, after COVID, I just went, you know, uh, I'm, I'm going to make the rules now. Like um, as in like, people come to us for an experience and um, if if they fail to show uh, rather than a $50 charge, we charge the whole menu. Um, we have less cancellations and people, I think, after the whole lockdown, respect uh, respect dining a bit more and, and business in general, small businesses are a lot more thoughtful. So, um, yeah, I think that's been a big thing to take out of 2020 and 2021 and moving forward i just hope that small business kind of yeah have a bit more um yeah respect and um and freedom moving forward hopefully less tax (laughs) (laughs) well frank it's an absolute honor to have you on deep in the weeds today just to hear a bit of your story uh good luck with the with the year ahead um, please keep in touch and uh, we'll catch up again soon. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. And, um, yeah, I've really enjoyed listening to the podcast. Not that I have time to listen to all of them, but, um, yeah, I think what you're doing is amazing. Thanks, Frank. It's great to have you on. Thanks so much, Anthony. Cheers. This is the Deep in the Weeds podcast. I'm Anthony Huckstep. Stay tuned as we take a deep dive into the lives of the incredible people who ply their trade in the food and hospitality sector. Special thanks to executive producer Rob Locke for making this all happen. Follow us on Instagram at Deep in the Weeds Podcast or email us at podcast at deepintheweeds.com.au. Stay safe and be well.